I want you to turn in your Bibles to 1 Samuel chapter 17. I want to br- read a fairly lengthy passage of Scripture this morning, and um, I, f- I feel like uh, the Lord wanted me to minister on this, so I, I uh, want to read it out first. So 1 Samuel chapter 17, a very well-known story, um, and um, reading from verse 1, it says, Now the Philistines gathered their armies together to battle and they were gathered at Sokoth which belongs to Judah they encamped around these three towns I can't pronounce (laughs) okay so we won't try and Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together and they encamped in the the valley of Elah and drew up in battle against the Philistines Philistines stood on the mountain on one side and Israel stood on the mountain on the other side with the valley between them and a champion went out from the camp of the Philistines named Goliath from Gath whose height was six cubits a span and a span he had a bronze helmet and on his head and he was armed with a coat of mail the weight of the coat was five thousand shekels of bronze he has bronze armor on his legs bronze javelin between his shoulders now the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam and his iron spearhead weighed 600 shekels and a shield bearer went before him then he stood and he cried out to the armies of Israel and said to them why have you come out why have you come out to line up for battle am I not a Philistine and you the servants of Saul choose a man for yourselves and let him come down to me and he's able to fight with me and kill me then we will be your servants but if I prevail against you and sorry against him and kill him then you shall be our servants and serve us and the Philistines said I defy the armies of Israel this day give me a man that we may fight together when Saul and all Israel heard these words of the Philistine they were dismayed and greatly afraid now down to verse 16 just want to jump over a bit there and the Philistine drew near and presented himself 40 days, morning and evening. Then Jesse said to his son David, Take now your brothers an ephah of dried grain and these ten loaves and run to your brothers at the camp and carry these cheeses to the captain of the thousand and see how your brothers are faring. Now Saul and they and all the men of Israel were in the valley of Elah fighting with the Philistines. David arose in the morning, left the sheep with the keeper, took the things, and went as Jesse had commanded him. He came to the camp as the army was going out to fight and shout, shouting for the battle. For Israel and the Philistines had drawn up in battle lines, army against army. And David left his supplies in the hand of the keeper, ran to the army, and came and greeted his brothers. Then as he talked to them, there was a champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, coming up from the armies of the Philistines, and he spoke according to the same words. So David heard him. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him and were dreadfully afraid. So the men of Israel said, Have you seen this man who comes against us? Surely he's come to defile Israel. And, shall, and, and, and it shall be the man who kills him, the king will enrich with great riches. And then down to verse 26. And David spoke to the man who stood by him and said, What shall be done for the man who kills Philistine and takes away the reproach? But who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? And the people answered him in this manner, saying, So shall it be done for the man who kills him. Now Eliab, his oldest brother, heard what he spoke to the men, and he was a, his anger was aroused against David. He said, Why did you come down here? And with whom have you left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know your pride and the insolence of your heart, for you've come down to see the battle. And David said to him, What have I done now? You know, brothers eh? who needs them <laughs> is is this is there not a cause then he turned to him and and he said the same thing and the people answered him as the first now when the words which david spoke were heard they reported them to saul and he sent for him and david said to saul let no man's heart fail because of him your servant will go and fight with the philistine now david said saul said to david you are not able to go against the philistine to fight with him for you are just a youth and this he's a man of war from his youth 
But David said to Saul, Your servant used to keep his father's sheep. When a lion or bear came and took a lamb out of the flock, I went out after it and struck it and delivered the lamb and from its mouth and it rose against me. I caught it by the beard, struck it and killed it. Your servant has killed both lion and bear and this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of those. Seeing as he has defied the armies of the living God. And then down to verse 40. I know I'm reading a lot, but I need to tell a story. And then he took a staff in his hand and he chose for himself five smooth stones from the brook and put them in a shepherd's bag in a pouch which he, had, which he had. And his sling was in his hand and he drew near the Philistine. So the Philistine came and began drawing near David. And the man who bore the shield went before him. And when the Philistine looked and saw David, he disdained him. For he was only a youth, ruddy, good looking. And so the Philistine said to David, Am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me and I will give the, your flesh to the birds of the air and the beasts of the field. Then David said to him, You come to me with sword, with spear and with javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel. Whoa. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Uh, this day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you and take your head from you. And this day I will give the carcass of the camp of the Philistines to the birds of the air and the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know there is a God in Israel. And all the assembly shall know the Lord does not save with sword and spear, but the battle is the Lord's, and he will give it into our hands. And so it was when the Philistine arose, he... He, he drew near, met to, to meet David. David hurried, ran back to the army to meet him. David put his hand in his bag, took a stone, sling it and slung him, and struck the Philistine in his forehead so that the stone sank into his forehead and he fell on his face to the earth. Now David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone and stuck, struck the Philistine and killed him. There was no sword in the hand of David. Therefore David ran, stood over the Philistine, took his sword, and he killed him, and he cut off his head. That's pretty cool, isn't it? And when the Philistines saw that the champion, their champion was dead, they fled. Now the men of Israel and Judah arose and shouted, pursued the Philistines as far as the entrance of the valley, and it goes on. And down to verse 55. When Saul saw what David coming out against the Philistine, he said to Abner, Whose son is this youth? As your soul lives, king, I do not know. So the king said, Inquire whose son this young man is. And Saul said to him, Whose son are you, young man? And David said, I am the son of your servant Jesse, the Bethlehemite. How do you say that? Bethlehemite. What a long word. What a great story this is of David's victory against the giant. If you've grown up in the church, you've heard this in Sunday school. And this is a tremendous victory from this young man. And we know that David was being prepared or was at least ordained by God to become the king of Israel. At this point in his life, he was a young man. He was not very old, maybe 16, 17 years old, but... He had within him the DNA of greatness in God. Last week I was talking about, about the fact that God is, is calling a people that know who their God is. And this morning I want to talk a little bit about who God has called us to be and the authority that we have as sons and daughters of the Most High God. You know, I really believe that what David did that day was not only overcome a giant, but he overcame a spirit of intimidation that had been sent to intimidate the people of God. He overcame this intimidation over an entire nation. For over a month they had hemmed them in and this man had stood and he'd shouted and cursed the people of God. And this young man came and he understood that his God was greater than any curse the enemy would, would throw. You know... They, this giant used intimidation and, and tried to block the army from stepping into its true destiny. 
You know, by saying things like, we're bigger than you, we're stronger than you, I'm more authoritative than you, I have greater power. And the entire army were, were in this place of being intimidated by this, this tremendous giant. You can't touch us. Look how big we are. You know, it's really interesting, this, this, this Philistine, this word Philistine, actually means anti-intellectual. And it's really an interesting group of people, but they were actually very anti, anti anything that was, was progressive. They were anti art, they were anti education, they were very narrow minded by their very definition. You, you know, we've heard in our culture you call someone a Philistine when they're kind of prehistoric. And this was actually a true definition of these people. They truly were not interested in, in advancing. You know, it's interesting, after this defeat by David, they were still around for a while, but they lost their power. Their power was reduced and they became a nomadic tribe that started to wander in the deserts. You know, there were some clashes through the book of Kings and eventually the Assyrians completely wiped out this, this group called the Philistines. I find it quite fascinating that the modern nation of Palestine is actually, actually a derivation of this word Philistine. It's Palestinia is actually taken from the word, the word um, Philistine. And you know, friends, we are living in a time where thanks, wait, intimidation is on the increase. You know, you just have to turn on your televisions and you can see that, that we're living in a day where people feel they have a right to intimidate the world. You know, we're under attack. You know, this uh, group called ISIS that are now around the world right now, or at least in some parts of the world, they've discovered that if they use media, then it's a very powerful tool in their hand. They used to bomb buildings. They used to think that they used to have to frighten the world to create terror. But now they've decided or realized all they have to do is film something and send it out through the mass media. And that thing creates terror in the hearts of people. Recently, we had a, a Jordanian man that was burnt alive and filmed and that thing went viral. And it struck fear in the hearts of people as they saw this ungodly race of people who would dare to strike terror. And this is a spirit of intimidation. You know, um, in recently in Sydney where this man took hostages in this um, thing right in the middle of, of Sydney, right in the middle of one of our national cities, a tremendous city of Sydney, and this one, one solitary man took, took captive all these people with guns and he put a, an Islamic banner out the front and it was all about intimidation. He understood that if he could get, get the press involved and they were, they were very quick to start to film this and it was shot all over the world and this became a site of intimidation as this man you know, eventually killed himself or, or whatever happened there. But in France recently, in this dreadful situation where, where this cartoon was drawn by, by this particular magazine and the Islamics got really upset about that and they attacked this, the, this uh, organisation for, for, for publishing these cartoons and that's gone tremendously all over the world. But that thing became a site of intimidation. You know, I believe the enemy likes to take the high ground of media. You know, we live in a time where at um, TV, we have 24 news all around the world right now, and we can watch what's going on over in Jordan, what's going on in America, live to our screens as we sit there and we eat our, our meal. But what it's doing, I believe, is releasing a spirit of intimidation against the people of God and also against the, the nations of the world. And I believe, you know, we're living in a time where these things will increase. Friends, it's no doubt that these sort of 
dreadful tactics are going to become more and more common as time goes on. You only have to read the Word of God to understand that, that dark days are ahead. You know, I, I was praying the other day and I really felt God say to me that, that, that we're going to see intimidation become a big part of the journey ahead. You know, in, Matt, in Luke chapter 21, it says, verse 26, men's hearts will fail them for fear and for the expectation of those things that are coming on the earth, but the powers of the heavens to be shaken. Men's hearts will fail them for fear of the expectation of the things that are coming upon the world. You know, and this is the time we, we, are living, we are living in. You know, I, I praise God that we are called to be more than conquerors in Him. I thank God that we have the DNA of greatness within inside of us, each one of us. You know, David was a unique man. He understood the authority that God had given to him. He was a young man, but he understood that greater is he that's within me than he that's within the world. You know, Daniel in chapter 11 said, those people who know their God will do great exploits. Hallelujah. Those who know their God will do great exploits. In fact, if you read that in context, Daniel is declaring in a last day, con in a, in, in a, in a last, last day situation, this is a response to a last day ruler that people who understand who God is, who understand the authority that God has put upon them will do great exploits in Him. You know, one of the ways the enemy works is he uses size and he uses bluster to cause fear to rise. And as fear becomes more predominant, you know, friends, people get terrified. You know, it's really interesting as you, if you talk to people about what's happening, they're frightened. There's a fear that's got a hold of their heart. And you know, David was such a unique man, yet he, under, he understood his authority, yet he was such a vulnerable young man. You know, he would be a worshiper one moment, and the next moment he'd step into his authority as a man of God. He knew who his God was. I have given you power over all the power of the enemy. You know, friends, if you are struggling in this house this morning with fear or with the spirit of intimidation, I want to say to you, this is messages for you. God does not want his people to be intimidated. You know, I believe the enemy has striven to try and control people with intimidation. Galatians chapter 5 says, For freedom you have been set free. For freedom you have been set free. What does that mean? It means, friends, you've been set free that you might live in freedom. God's desire for a church is to be a church of overcomers, people that understand who their God is. They realise that through their God they shall do valiantly, that God is greater within them than those things that are happening around about them. That's the season we're entering, I believe, that God is looking for a people who understand that his power within them is so great. You know, one of the things the enemy does to us is he blinds us. You know, when, when you enter into a particular sin, you know, if you struggle with certain things, it actually creates blindness that comes. And you know, if we, if we live under blindness, we can become blind to the very issues that are happening around about us. You know, I've, I've seen people that have been living in, in intimidating situations and you feel like, why don't they just break it? Why can't they just step out of it? And because they can't, because they can't see it, that thing so has them blinded, so has them caught up, they're unable to see that the victory is theirs. And this morning, God wants you to break that and say, no more. That's not going to have power over me anymore. You know, he never uses the world's tactics. The world's tactics are bigger. We're going to have big to overwhelm. We're going to threaten you like the giant of Goliath. 
They're going to come and we're going to intimidate you. All through scripture we find that the Lord uses the least to stand against the great. The great. You know the story of Gideon, a wonderful story of reducing an army from 33,000 people down to, to 300 people to show that the Lord is in victory. You know, Goliath was nine foot, foot something tall and, you know, he's so intimidating, so authoritative on one level and yet David understood that his God was greater. You know, last month I was... Um, I had a bit of an experience. We, you know, one of the things we do here is we run a meal down on all during the week here. And, um, you know, we've been doing that for years. And, and, you know, we sometimes have problems. We sometimes have struggles down there with people that come and like alcohol or drugs. And, and I think last Monday was probably the worst night we've ever had. I was <laughs> down there. It was almost like the enemy went and got a dirty great big tip truck and picked up every every drug dealer, every drunk in Frankston and dropped them off at the end of our street. We had fights going on, we had drug deals going on, we had alcohol going on. And, you know, I was sitting there and watching all this and, and I just felt the Lord give this scripture to me, you know, when the enemy shall come in like, the, like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord would raise up a standard against him. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord would raise up a standard. You know, I actually, I actually had to walk out on, we had to sort out some stuff. We rang the police, and, but I stepped into an authority that God wanted me to step into. And I felt like, you know, that's part of the call that's upon my life is to walk in the authority of God. And I was standing there and I was sorting out all this mess and we're trying to separate people and trying to change situations. And we're, you know, I'm telling some people, you get lost, go now. You know, and, and I, you know, if you know me well enough, I'm actually not an aggressive person by nature. I'm, I'm actually very placid. And, and you might think, well, you're, you know, you're really big and, and I am big, I can't help that. <laughs> It's my mother's fault. <sighs> Nothing to do with me. Well, a little bit. I eat too much. But that's the, the height bit I can't change. But, but you know, um, I, I've never been a really aggressive person. It's not my nature. I'm actually a very placid person. When I was at school, you know, I, I actually found that I, was the, I, I became the, 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 the uh, target for bullies. Anybody else been bullied here? And for some reason... All through my schooling, I, ha I got bullied, you know. And the reason I got bullied, I believe, is I, I was really tall, but I was really skinny. And, and I would never, ever fight back. Never, ever. It was just not in my nature to fight back. And people would pick it and they'd pick on me and they'd rip up my books. And, you know, all the stuff bullies do. And, and uh, I never, never, ever retaliated. And, you know, I often wonder. It's like, like certain people have marks on their life where where they get picked out you know and they get picked out and they get intimidated through life and I remember thinking as I grew up you know it's almost like that that I've got to live in this place of of being afraid of people and I feel like you know maybe the enemy wanted to intimidate me I don't know and I, I um I met Jesus and he changed my life you know I was not an aggressive person, but I stepped into this place of understanding that his authority is mine. The same authority that he had. And I read a story in the New Testament about Jesus walking into a room. And it just said he walked into a room and he put them out. And I thought, wow, I like that. He walked into a room and he put them out. And so I started to say, God, I want to walk in your authority. And as I prayed that, I feel like God said, okay, I'm going to agree with your prayer. And I felt like God put upon my life this measure of authority, you know. And I believe whatever you ask for in prayer, the Bible says, you shall receive. And I knocked and the door was opened. And, you know, it's been an issue for me all through my journey with the Lord. It seems that I have sometimes to step into this place of supernatural authority over the realm of the enemy. 
And it's not a natural thing. People might say, because you're a big man, but the truth is it's not a natural thing that flows out of me. It's a thing that comes from deep within my spirit that I know that God is greater than anything that's outside. I don't care whether the devil himself walks in this room. Greater is he that's within me than he that's within the world. You know, I believe the spirit of intimidation is, is attacking the people of God. And that's what I, well, I wanted to share this this morning. I felt God so say to me that this spirit of intimidation is there to try and stop people entering into the full promise of God. You know, the enemy often cajoles us into hiding our convictions because because there may be someone that disagrees or there may be someone that doesn't like what we say. But the Word of God says to us, Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who are walking on it because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way that leads to life. And there are few who find it. You know, there's many, many, many people saying many things today. There's so much pressure out there to speak a different message from what the Word of God tells us about certain issues. You know, sexuality. You know, this wasn't even a fight a few years ago, but it's almost like the fight has already been won. But, you know, that's one area. But there's so many areas today of compromise and petition against what God's Word says. And I believe one of the ways the enemy uses is intimidating us. There's so many of them. This uh, must be right. The whole world believes this. But friends, I believe the time is, is upon the church that we are called to understand the authority that we have been given in Christ. You know, God saw in this young man a boldness. He understood, even though he was young, there was this incredible audacity within this young man that he would stand up and declare what God has said. He didn't care what people thought of him. He didn't care what his brothers thought of him. You know, right in the middle of an entire army, right in the middle of the great army of God, his brothers were there. And his brothers had even, you know, had even made fun of him. He understood the values of heaven. When he stood and said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? He was declaring the nature of God. Who does he think he is? That he dares to stand against the army of the living God. This authority came upon him. He stepped into an anointing. And friends, I believe that anointing is upon the church. And often we, we don't, you know, we're, we're intimidated not to walk in that thing. You know, you might think I'm just small and insignificant, you know, but in his heart, he didn't see the giant. He didn't care whether he's 40 foot tall. He didn't care whether he's 100 foot tall because he knew his God was bigger. But what we do is we look in the natural. You know, and friends, I believe today God wants us to face our giants in our hearts. He's given us power over all the power of the enemy. He's given you power this morning over the thing that's been harassing you, over the thing that has tried to stop you, a giant of intimidation. You know, I was reading this from... One particular author, he said, the object of intimidation is to restrain you from action and coerce you or force you into submission. Intimidation wants to overwhelm you with a sense of inferiority and fear. Once you've retreated into submission, either knowingly or unknowingly, you are a servant of the intimidator. You are no longer free to fulfill the will of God, but are doomed to desire to the desires of your intimidating captor. Consequently, the gift of God, his spiritual ability in you is inoperative. Now your authority has been stripped from you in order to be used against both you and those in your sphere of influence. 
And friends, I believe there are Christians that have a spirit of intimidation that is stopping them from entering into the call of God on their life. You've allowed people to rule you. You know, one of the, one of the fears, and there's so many fears that people struggle with, but, but the, one of the fears that so many Christians struggle with is, is, is the fear of what people will think about you. What will they think? What will, who cares what they think? But, but the reality is many of us live in that place of fearing. Oh God, but what, what if I make a fool of myself? What if it doesn't work? You know, if you've, you've been in a place where you've done what others wanted to, to, you to do because you didn't want to face things. And there's people here that have, have allowed this thing to dominate them all their lives. You know, you might have been like me at school where you had these, these kids. You know, it's interesting, one of these guys that used to pick on me was when I was a teenager, I was kind of 14, I guess, and he used to bring his mates and they would literally break things and, you know, they'd just been horrible. And Anyway, um, that all kind of stopped as I got older and I saw him, I actually ran into him when I was an adult and, and um, I think, I'm not sure that I'd been a Christian, but... I ran into this guy and he just had like loser written over his life, you know. And I thought, you know, it's really interesting. We, he actually spoke to me, he came up to me and one day and, and I chatted to him. I didn't say anything about the way he used to treat me, but he's older than me, you know. But, and I remember seeing him and I thought, wow, you know, you've really reaped where you've sown in life. And I remember walking away thinking, wow. He just, he just sort of reeked kind of that he he just, his life had amounted to nothing, you know. And here I was in a very different place. And often the choices we make, you know, it's so true, isn't it? The choices we make in life actually define the sort of person we become. You know, in your workplace or, you know, it's so true that, that, that if you have a, an intimidated spirit or if you've been intimidated that, that abusers or people who, who are ab abusive actually sense you. And you might be in this room this morning and you feel like you just attract abusive people. You know, it's really interesting that people who often get out of one relationship of a controlling, abusive person get into another one with a controlling, abusive person. You know, often true alcoholics, people who marry an alcoholic, they get out of a relationship with one and they marry another alcoholic. And it kind of, this cycle goes on. And it's almost like they're written over their life, come and abuse me, come and defile me. And you know, it's, I, it's like the, these people have a right over our life. And I think abusive people often open the doors of intimidation in our life. And we live in this place of fear, blame, or even self-abuse or, or accusation. And it's true that people will use words to coerce us, words to manipulate us, words to try and get us to do things for them. And I believe this morning, friends, it's time to break that in your life. It's time to say, I'm giving the enemy the boot out of my heart. I'm not letting a spirit of intimidation stop me anymore from living who I'm called to be in Christ. You know, the Bible tells me that I am a new person in Christ. When I first met Jesus, that was a scripture that he gave to me, and I would walk through my day. And I, you know, I came out of such garbage, such rubbish, such all these drugs and all these bad things, and, and I would speak that scripture. I said, I am a new person today. I'm a new creation in Christ. All old things are passed away. You know, some people seem to drag their past with them. And you know, they've been a Christian for years and they're still struggling with drugs. They're still struggling with the sex problems and the issues of, of sin that keeps to, seems to encapsulate them. You know, I made a decision. I had to actually cut off many of my friends because I, I realized this journey I'm making, they, won't, they won't, don't want to come with me. They're not interested. In fact, my old friends would make fun of me and say, you know, you'll be back. You'll come back. And I knew in my heart, this is the journey I'm making. I'm going to stay serving Christ. 
And here I am, you know, a lot, of, a lot of years later, still doing what God's called me to do. And I believe it's because the Word of God is what it says it is. It's true. You know, in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, it says, God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. He has not given me a spirit of fear. And this morning, if you struggle with fear, you need to say, I have not been given a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind in Christ Jesus. And we need to recognise that the Word of God is a double-edged sword in our hand. And it cuts down the work of the enemy. You know, many people think if I leave the enemy alone, he'll leave me alone. But that's actually not true. Kind of sneaking their life, you know, trying to avoid confrontation. And, you know, I, I, I really don't like confrontation. It's not something... Who likes confrontation here? Who doesn't like confrontation? <laughs> okay. Most people don't then. That's okay. I don't like it, you know, but in my job and the stuff I have to do, sometimes I have to step into that place. But it's almost like God pushes me into that, like what happened last Monday night. He pushed me into that place because I needed to step into an authority and say, no, this is not going to happen in this place. And I believe when I declare that, I got up at, at the um, meal and I actually prayed and took authority and it just went deathly quiet in the room, you know. <laughs> I said, I just said, today it's it. It's over. We're not going to deal drugs anymore. I was just, I was angry in the spirit. You know, I wasn't angry in my nature. But the truth is, friends, I needed to step into the authority that God had given to me. And I'll step there when God opens that door. You know, there's been times in my journey where I've, I've had to step into that authority because God has called me to do that. And sometimes, friends, we allow the enemy to just intimidate us and to stop us and to prevent us from, from operating in the call of God simply because we've had fear in our hearts. You know, Jesus, he was a nice guy most of the time. But when he got around religious people, he was not so nice. He walked into the temple and the Bible says he made a cord, a whip out of cords and he started to whip people as they were selling merchandise in the house of God. And I can imagine he was enraged with this, this rage from his father. Not angry, but filled with authority to get out of my father's house because this is called to be a house of worship. And Father, I thank you that my power is great in this place. And you know, he understood who he was. And we might think, well, he was Jesus. Yes, but he subjugated all his power. He, he walked here as a man. He recognized who he was as he made that whip. The, and the Bible says a zeal for his father's house will, will just, in, you know, eclipse him or, or, or cover him. And today, friends, I believe God wants us to break the hold of the enemy over our hearts. And if you're in this place this morning and you know, hey, that's, he's talking to me. He's talking to me. And you're trying to hide behind someone. I can see you. I'm standing up here. I'm taller. But you know in your heart that you've allowed a spirit of intimidation or fear to stop you entering into the call of God. And this morning I felt God say to me, and you know, this wasn't what I'd planned to share, but I felt God say to me, I want you to talk about this because this thing needs to be stopped today. And I want you to stand up this morning if you are struggling with intimidation or fear. Right across the room, I want you to just stand where you are and say, yep, that's who I am. I'm dealing with that. If there's anyone else, I don't care. I'm not going to look around, but I'm going to pray in a, in a few moments. There's people here and you know you need to say, now is the day I say no to this spirit of intimidation because I'm not going to let it stop me entering in anymore. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If I can invite those people that are standing, get out of your seats, come on up. Stand right across the front of the auditorium right now. Just stand there. Pastor Faye, could you come, please? We're going to break this. Um, don't worry, I'm not going to take you through.
big heap of deliverance here. We're just going to break this thing this morning. It's done. It's done. I want you to close your eyes. Come and stand at the front. Come on, right across the front. Right across the front. Hallelujah. That's right. That's right. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord. Father, I thank you for greater is he that's within us than he that's within the world this morning. In Jesus' name. Now, what, what I'm going to do, friends, is I'm going to lead you in a prayer to break this thing, okay? I want you to pray with me. It's really important you do this. And as you pray this, we're just going to agree with you and the power of the enemy will be defeated. It will be defeated this morning. Okay, dear God, today I step into my authority as a son or a daughter of God, whatever it is. And I break the spirit of intimidation. And I break the spirit of fear over my life. And this day, I take back my authority as a son of God. In Jesus' name, this thing no longer has power over me. Amen.